you are listening. <laughs> you are listening to the Energy is Love podcast. This is episode 118, I think. Thank you, everybody who has been tuning into the podcast as of late. And thank you to everybody that has been listening to the podcast since the very beginning. Lately, I have been asking the same question, or at least the same first question to all the guests that come on the podcast. And I absolutely love it. It's a really kind of thought-provoking, challenging question that is sparking these really good conversations that I really, really enjoy having. So I'm going to keep doing it. Not just the podcast, but I'm going to keep starting every episode with that question. I think it's about time that everybody starts thinking about mental health and mental balance and mental illness in a different way. And that's the reason why I asked the question. So hopefully you guys listening start thinking about it differently. And you also get to hear all of these amazing guests talk about it openly. It makes me really happy. Doing the podcast makes me really happy. You know what else makes me really happy? Coaching men. Maybe you're not aware of this, but I do, in fact, work one-on-one -on -one with men directly, helping them. And what do I help them with? I help them dive deep into their emotions. I help them expand that space even more. I help them learn and practice how to feel, how to connect, how to open up to their emotional health and well-being, which then expands into their physical health, their mental health, their spiritual health, all areas of life. And then it helps them go out and connect more with their significant others, connect more with their children, connect more with their friends, their wives, their spouses, everything. Really, the, at, at the end of the day, my purpose, my goal, my focus, my passion, passion, it's definitely a passion, is helping men open up and connect to themselves and then open up and connect to the world. So if you're interested, please reach out. You can go to our website, energieslovepodcast.com, click on the contact button, link, tab, whatever you want to call it. Shoot me an email. I'd love to chat with you. I'd love to tell you a little bit more about what it is that I do and how I do it. You can also look on the website. There's a little tab with coaching. It says coaching. It's labeled conveniently as that. And you can learn more. You can also go to that website and find everything about the podcast all the different places you can listen and subscribe and share and all that jazz. So, brand new episode, episode 118 with my wonderful guest, Lindsay Dugas. Stephanie and I met Lindsay back in August at the annual float conference that takes place every year. Actually, this was the last year it's going to take place. <laughs> but anyways, we met Lindsay last August in Portland, Oregon. And Lindsay is a light attendant. What the hell is that, you ask? It's not a flight attendant. It's completely different than that, obviously. But at that float conference, Stephanie and I had an experience with the, what it's called, it's Lucia Light, the Lucia Light experience. And Lindsay is a facilitator of that experience. The Lucia Light is a hypnagogic light machine. It took me about four times to be able to say hypnagogic, and I still don't think I got it right. But anyways, it's a white flashing light, just pure white light. What it does is it encourages your brain to go into this deep meditative state, kind of the theta state that takes place when you are in a deep meditative state. And it's incredible the experience that you can have in that place. I had a 30-minute session with the light, and it was incredibly profound. I left that experience not just calm and relaxed, but super open, not just in the sense of like, oh, I love everything and I love everybody but also felt very, very connected to my body as well as my mind. Incredibly chill and relaxed. And I had some of the most insane visuals that I've ever had before in a meditative experience. That's the light. But this episode is with Lindsay, who facilitates those experiences with the light. And she was super cool. We met in Reno. Lindsay lives in Nevada, and I was on a road trip. And we ended up recording in the van in the middle of a park in Reno, Nevada. It was a lot of fun. Lindsay was a great guest. I got to learn a lot more about her and her life and her experiences. We also talk a little bit about the light, so you can learn about that. But this episode is both funny, fascinating, interesting, and we dive deep into a lot of different areas and a lot of different topics. Keep in mind, it was recorded in the minivan in the middle of a park in Reno, Nevada. So every now and then you hear a little bit of background noise, but it's not bad. 
I want to thank Lindsay for being on the podcast and for chilling in the minivan for an hour and a half while we recorded. It was a lot of fun. You can go find out more about her and what she does with the Lucia Light. Her website is createcoherence.net. We've got a link for it in the show notes. I would encourage you to go check it out. And the cool thing about Lindsay is she travels all over the country with this light. So she can come to you and give you the experience, whether it's in your home, maybe you have a float center that you operate and you want to bring out Lindsay and have her do like a weekend thing there, set up the light, give the experience to your customers. She does all these kind of different things. So I would highly recommend reaching out, contacting her and getting something set up so that she can come out to your place and give you guys this experience because it's really, really profound. But for now, we get to sit back and relax and enjoy another wonderful episode of the Energy is Love podcast with my wonderful guest, Lindsay Dugas. Here we go. You're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is the love podcast. The Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is Love podcast. The podcast for the universe. The Energy is Love podcast. So rather than talking directly into the mic, okay. I talk across the mic. Oh, okay. So like really... Not it, that much. Okay. Where it was was okay. Okay. Yeah. And you don't have to think too much about it. Don't get too caught up in like, <laughs> am I talking into the <laughs> microphone the right way? I don't know. It's not a big deal. Okay. It all but sounds if you, good. If you catch me start circling like this, yeah. maybe do something with your hand like <laughs> stop. Well, I'll just tell you. Knock that shit off. Just talk into the mic. So we'll get silence and then we'll go. Okay. <sighs> I always take this huge sigh, like this big, huge, deep breath after that silence because I feel like I'm holding my breath during that entire time. Completely. Yeah. And so then I'm like, <gasps> and I'm like, that sounds stupid. However, thank you, Lindsay, <laughs> 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 for coming. Well, you don't live far, right? You live in Carson City. Yeah. And we are, for the listeners, we are in a red minivan, my red minivan, that I actually, I, I record all the intros for the beginning portions of these episodes. There's always like this little introduction to the episode as far as who I'm talking to and whatever. And typically, I record those in this minivan in my garage oh, at the house. Nice. Because it's the only part of the house that's like quiet and it's a nice little uh, like secluded space that's got pretty good sound quality. So I'll throw everything in the minivan and go sit out there for like six minutes while I fumble my way through the introduction and then come back inside. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Well, no wonder you were so, you had this all dialed in. I mean, you had this <laughs> dialed in. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. This isn't the first time we've done this, so it's kind of nice. But thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like we said, we're in a minivan and we're in a park. What's the name of this park? Idle Wild Park. Idle Wild? Yeah. That's kind of a cool name. Yeah. And it's a little breezy outside, so periodically I'm sure we'll hear something in the background, but I think overall it sounds really nice. It does, definitely. Tell me your last name again. Lindsay Dugas. Dugas? Yeah. I'm going to forget that. That's okay. Yeah. You could you could also call me Lindsay Regali. Regali? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I am married, but I just never changed my name just because that's just a huge task and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> can't be go to the social security DMV. Like we just don't have time for that. So, so is Dugas your maiden name? Maiden yeah. name. Okay. Married name is Regali. Regali. Yeah. Okay. So do you see how you're talking to me now? Yeah. Like right off the bat, we're just going to call you out on your fucking shitty microphone. -ish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking like past the microphone this way. Okay. So I don't know if we need to adjust it at all. What do you think? Um, cause that's the other thing. Like, it's nice to be able to look at the person, right? Yeah, for sure. Let's go like this. Okay. So how was that? That's all good. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's all better. Right. Fantastic. I think so. Say something. Um, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, <laughs> joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, joy. How's that? <laughs> Perfect. That's why it was off. My volume was down on your microphone. Ah, Yes, okay. it, it does sound much better. Sounds louder. a lot better, right? Yeah. Okay. So all that's going in the episode, and we'll just pretend like nobody heard the fact that we just fucked up the first part of it, but it's all good. Okay, great. Because I just drove for a long, long time. Yes, and I just got back from Boston, so I'm yeah. in a time warp. <laughs> drive from from where we live in Utah to here in Reno, Nevada, 
I've never made it before. Oh. And it's incredibly long and it's incredibly boring and there's nothing but flat, semi-rolling hills with some mountains burst, podunk yeah. everywhere you go. Yep. Yeah. I did that um, earlier this year and yeah, it was very flat. Lucky, Luckily I had somebody and we talked the whole way, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. And listen to a lot of podcasts and tried not to fall asleep. But we're here. We're good. So Lindsay, the first question, have you ever listened to an episode of the podcast before? Uh no. Okay. No. So I ask everybody the same first question. Okay. Right off the bat. And it's a tough one. It's kind of a doozy of a question. But it's important to me. And that's why I talk about it on the podcast. And that's why uh I ask everybody the same question because I like the idea of everybody listening, hearing everybody that I talk to on the podcast talk about this topic in a way to normalize it and okay. make it something that isn't such a big deal to talk about in society today. Okay. I'm intrigued. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Hit me with it. Let's go. So the question is, uh, it's kind of varied. I, it's, it's a big question. What form of mental illness do you suffer from or where do you struggle when it comes to your mental well-being and balance, whether it's past, present, or I guess the future, you could predict what you're going to be struggling with. Okay. But uh, it's mental illness. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Um, I've been doing this spiritual work for many, many years, right? And I've hit all kinds of different layers. Um, and I keep getting further and further, of course, uh, and digging and so the the most current thing that I've noticed is that I've always had this underlying ho hum is what I call it <laughs> ho hummery right um there's nothing wrong um but I just have this ho hummery about every you know everything like oh well oh cool you know um so I know that that's something that is very deep seated and that I'm just digging at to to figure that out. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's been so many things that help and, you know, awareness is number one. <laughs> like, <laughs> why do I even have this number one? Right. Because life is beautiful, right? There's those days where it's like just on fire and everything is so bright and vibrant. And you're just like, oh my God, why can't I feel like this every day? This is who I really am, you know? Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. And um, that's like the most current thing, but I feel like that that has been the underlying thing, you know, of depression or, you know, anxiety, whatever it is. Um, you know, of course I've like had all those stuff, all that stuff. Right. And, um, work through a lot of that. Like I worked through a lot of anxiety, which was fantastic to realize that, um, I don't have to trust every thought that comes into my head, <laughs> which is like so liberating for me. And I, I learned that many years ago. Um, but anyways, but yeah, so as I get into these deeper layers, it's now into this ho hummery where it's like, I mean, I have my own business and, you know, all this stuff and, you know, all this meditation and yeah. And sometimes it still creeps in and it's like, okay, what are we doing today? <laughs> you know? Ho hummery. Yeah. I don't think that's the clinical diagnosis. Probably not, <laughs> it, but it's my clinical <laughs> Yeah. No, I like it. I, I mean, kind of like everything's muted, right? Yeah, yeah. Where it's just like life's good and everything's wonderful, but yet I don't feel it. I can't embrace it. I can't enjoy it. I yeah. can't really be present in it. Yep. Yeah, it's a trip. So uh, depression and anxiety are like the two I have found over the course of, because asking people this question is something that I've only done. Oh. <sighs> I don't know, like the last 20 episodes or 15 episodes or something like that. And we have like over 100 episodes. So it's not something that I've done over the course of the the podcast, but it's recent. Yeah. And I have found that depression and anxiety are the two most common ones that people talk about and that people are comfortable talking about, where I feel like those two specifically, depression and anxiety, are widely accepted as acceptable yeah. to have, right? Yeah. To, to, to talk about, to um, express and share about, and everybody can accept the fact that everybody has some depression and some anxiety from time to time. And I think that's wonderful, and I'm glad that we talk about it in that way. But I also think that <clears throat> it's just a safe way to talk about shit that we don't want to talk about. Right. And so if you're okay with it, like let's go a little bit deeper into... 
what that has looked like throughout your life, the ways that it's manifested. Cause this is the other thing too, that not only I believe, but I saw, you know, in talking to people about it and also from my previous life, not my previous life, <laughs> from all my past life experiences, <laughs> yeah. but throughout my life, it's what I've seen. It's what I have experienced. It's what I've seen in other people as well is that everything is always, you know, waves of it where it's not just clinical depression that lasts your entire life. You'll have spurts of it. You'll have times where it's intense You'll have times where it's debilitating. You'll have times where it's the ho-hum, or you'll have times where it's just like, eh, I feel kind of shitty today. Um, and then there's times where it's like, I can't get out of bed. Uh, I don't want to live anymore. Everything is, you know, I just don't have any energy for this fucking thing we call life anymore. So I think it comes in waves. So throughout your life, how has depression and anxiety manifested and come in those waves? Yeah. Um, this is the part where you're like, yeah, I don't want to talk about this shit. <laughs> no, it's, well, it's, well, you talk about your, your past life. <laughs> it's like, I I feel like I've lived so many lifetimes in this life already that it's, I mean, my God, we go from when I was back in my teenage years and it just, I mean, just an absolute mess. And it's just like, I didn't quite feel like I was a part of this world and there was all these rules, you know, um, of what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to be, all this other kind of shit. And I just, I rebelled so much, you know what I mean? Um, you know, with all kinds of different substances and just, you know, just went wild, you know? Um, but then it was like, so then that was teenage years. Then you go get into my twenties and it was just like, you know, I stopped doing all that shit. And then all that stuff started to come to surface. And it's like, oh, okay, so I have to actually deal with this. It doesn't, you know what I mean, go away. So it was just, um, I I want to say that, yeah, I just had the, the waves of depression and the waves of anxiety. And it was just, I mean, God, it's just, it's hard to remember how, because it was so long ago. <laughs> um but that anxiety and, uh, hang on, I'm having a brain fart here. You're okay. Good part. Good thing we can edit this out. <laughs> we might. <laughs> I'll talk to the editor and see if he'll take it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, cause it was just so long ago and I just have evolved so much. I feel like, um, but I feel like everything that you said was everything I went through. I mean, there were days I didn't want to live and there was days where I actually thought I was going to do it, you know, and just throw myself off a bridge or a cliff or whatever and call it a day, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but then it was just one of those things where it was like I just kept having this voice that it was just like, you know, just that keep going type of knowing this, that it's like you just keep going. And so... um but yeah, I don't know. For me, it's 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 forever layers and it's forever learning. You know what I mean? It's like I said, that whole hummery can come back at any time, you know, and it's like there's nothing going on with it wrong in my life or what my perception is as wrong or not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and so I I think just my lifetime this time is that I'm just supposed to work on this. Um and just keep getting to those different layers and those different levels. You know? Well, I like you, I like that you said that you've evolved so much since then. Yeah, it's hard to remember, honestly. Like, I remember the feelings, but I don't remember, like, exactly what happened or what was going on even at that time. But it's like, I, I remember it. I remember being so anxious. I was just shaking, you know, thinking I was absolutely crazy. Yeah. I thought I was nuts. <clears throat> so I think everybody thinks that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> not just at periods of time, but like continually yeah. throughout. Because I still have moments of like that where I'm like, maybe I'm just losing it. Like, maybe this is it. I'm in my mid to late 30s, and this is when my schizophrenia sets in, and <laughs> it's going to come on, <laughs> and I just have to prepare for it because I'm clearly completely lost it. Yeah. And I think that's pretty normal. That's the other thing is like all this shit I think is just normal. Yeah. I hate the stigma attached to mental illness. I hate the label mental illness, making it seem like there's something wrong with us. Right. Um, I like mental balance much better, right? How do yeah. you 
what do you do and where do you struggle when it comes to your mental balance? Because that's all it is, is it's a balancing act of your mental health and well-being, but it's also interconnected with every other aspect of us, right? Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all these different sides of us that make up who we are as people. Yeah. And you have to balance all of them. Right. And society just wants to make it super simple where it's like, well, it's a mental illness. Right. You, you know, you suffer from depression. And I don't suffer from depression. I'm a human. Yeah. And I have waves of emotion at times that I do handle well at some times and then fell miserably at handling at other times. Exactly. And it's just the ongoing practice of learning how to cope and deal with all the different things that we have to experience throughout life. Right. Exactly. And that's where I'm kind of at right now is like, I just feel like we're just supposed to experience it all. Honestly, it's like, um, there was a time during that anxiety period that I was just trying to, oh, I, I need to fix all my feelings so that I don't ever feel like this again. And it's like, well, that's, you know, that's another, I feel like doctor kind of, you know, thing, no, you need to fix yourself. And it's like, well, how about I just feel the feelings, feel whatever I'm feeling, you know what I mean? And just feel it to its core, but then not wallow in it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and that's what I would do is I would just really wallow in that shit and um you know and it's like i i feel like it's totally okay to feel these feelings it's okay to feel sad and it's like for some reason sometimes we don't know why we feel sad but we are so just you know feel it all the way and um that's like really worked for me and being able to um do that but then just not linger in it <laughs> it's like okay i felt you i'm gonna let you go now you know and ask for clarity yeah you know <clears throat> why do you think we hold on to them so much because i agree we have to feel it when it's here like allow it to kind of resonate dive into it let it be felt but then also kind of watch it go and mm -hmm. allow for the next one to come in and the yeah. next one to come in and it's when we stop allowing them to come in and we're like fuck that i'm not gonna feel that then they just kind of wait in line outside the door and back up. And then there's this huge line of emotion to fill that doesn't go anywhere. They just like sit there patiently playing on their fucking phones until we let them in to be felt. Right. But why do you think that, because I'm just sitting here thinking about it as you're describing it. It's like, why do you think people typically will hold on to those feelings so much? Because we do wallow in the depression and the sadness and the despair and all the bullshit almost to the point where we are like physically, in a sense, holding on to this. Yeah. What the hell's that? Um, for me personally, I, I feel like it, I practiced it so much that every time it showed back up, it would just last longer and longer and longer. You know, it's like, say, for example, I wake up and I'm just feeling sad. Oh, now I'm, I'm just going to keep thinking of all these different things that make me feel sad, you know, and then I'm sad and sad and sad it just and then it accumulates. And then all of a sudden it's a day and then all of a sudden, you know, it's a week and then all of a sudden it's a month. And then I've just, you know, now I'm watching sad movies and now I'm listening to sad music and I'm just everything is sad, you know. And so for me personally, I feel like I just practiced it enough that now all of a sudden that's just who I am and I wake up that way and I just am that way until you know there's that moment of like what happened to me <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a happy joyful fun loving adventurous person like I know that's who I really am like what who is this other person you know and I think it's so individual for each person their kind of wake up you know what I mean uh, mine's been like I said, many layers because the depression, the anxiety, all the weird little things that I had practiced for so long, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, little bit by little bit, we we start to chip away at this stuff and start to reveal ourselves, thank God, you know, or remember who we really are. <laughs> what if there's some evolutionary reason for it? Do you know mm. what I mean? Like what if, because it's really common, right? Yeah. Where people will, like if we step outside of it and look at... Uh, like human the species right people in general like whether we look at it from like a spiritual standpoint or not but like we're born perfect right yeah we come out super light in love and blah 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 as babies yeah and then life hits us with all this shit and then hopefully at some point in our life we uh start seeking back towards that light or back towards that love and exactly. that balanced place of purity but there has to have like like it's the journey itself right 
where you have to have that experience. And so maybe there's some evolutionary standpoint or even so just some like uh, growth that has to take place in some genetic part of us is like designed to hold on to shit mm. because we realize that it's going to like super subconscious and you know the like out there kind of way that it's going to give us the strength to then move back towards uh uh, uh the light or the love or whatever and i hate describing things that way because it sounds super stupid but right <laughs> um do you know what I mean? Yes. Like what if there's some something to that where, because it is very, very common where people will wallow in it. Yeah. And almost like, I don't want to say, t- but it's almost like a badge of courage at times where we want to hear our own story and think about how important we are and how much we've come through and how much we've survived and look what I've done and all of this shit that I've come through and now look at where I'm at. Where it's like, yeah, but you didn't really have to do that. Mm. You chose to do that. You had these experiences and you could have just let them come, fill them, and then let them go. But instead you chose to hold on to all of them. But maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's part of our design, our makeup, and our DNA, you know, over time that we've had to realize that, oh, we have to hold on to some of these things and wallow in some of this shit. And I have no idea why. It doesn't really make sense even as I'm saying it or describing it. But maybe there's something there that I don't know. Well, I mean, what if it goes to goes back to like some primal instinct, right? Because it's like, okay, if, you know, I mean, we're just going to call it ego for right now. But I mean, we could call it all kinds of different things. But let's just call it ego right now. It loves like known and the same. It likes pattern. It's It likes routine. It likes to, it likes predictability. You know what I mean? And so it's like, well, what if... Um, that goes back to something way primal because it's like way primal in the, you know, your DNA and everything. It it likes predictable, likes knowns because that's what's safe. You know, it could go as far back, you know, as that. I mean, I've thought about this a lot, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, I mean, that's definitely a possibility because it's all about protecting the species in the body, you know what I mean? And so what's known is... um, is what's safe. And so now, of course, look at here we are, we've, you know, as a species, we've evolved to this and all this technology and all this stuff. Well, I feel like that primal, you know, safety thing hasn't exactly caught up with us. I think it's still like really, really primal. And so then, you know, you get into this pattern of, or this habit of depression or anxiety, well, it then becomes a known, you know, and now it's this safety net of, you know, because anything else outside of this depression is an unknown, and that's scary to this, I feel like, this primal... Yeah, I see what you're saying, because, yeah. I mean, we have, like, this... <clears throat> it's like the fight-or-flight instinct, right? Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, we have this monkey brain, this primitive part of our brain that yep. its sole purpose is just uh, perpetuating our existence and yeah. our survival. Yeah. And it's obviously going to interpret... And <laughs> It's going to interpret. It's going to interpret experiences, feelings, emotions, stimulus outside of our body in those two things. Is this something that's going to kill me or is this something that is safe, right? Exactly. And so much of our existence and our evolutionary standpoint of us evolving as human beings and as a species was just that. Is this safe or is this something that's going to kill me? And if it's something that's going to kill me, do I need to stop? So it can't see me and then it can go around me or do I need to get the fuck out of here? Yeah. And so maybe there's some aspect of that too where I like what you're saying about like patterns, right? And that part of the brain likes routine and likes patterns because then it knows what's coming next, right? Mm -hmm. So much of even our existence today and the fear that we have, especially in relation to anxiety, is fear, right? And fear is typically the unknown. And so... um. <clears throat> this thought was really formulating in my head and now it's gone. <laughs> 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 no, but it makes sense, I think. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, it's, I've, I've also thought about another aspect of this though, because it's like, okay, this depression and anxiety, it's like, if you, if you get to a point where, I mean, you're, you are going to throw yourself off a cliff. It's like, oh, okay. 
So if this is, it's the body's way of protecting itself, you know, because the oppression is known, it's like, well, no, this is actually more of like a virus. And the virus, you know, invades its host and then it ends up killing its host. It's just like, oh, man, you can really start to get in loops. You know, I like to go for walks out in the desert and I think about this type of stuff for hours at a time. <laughs> Where am I? I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> Can't find my way back to the car. Yeah. And I mean, I can really get in these loops and, and uh, you know, it's just all fun stuff to think about. You know what I mean? It's just like, wow, okay. I mean, anxiety, or if you think about it this way, right? I mean, some people say, you know, anger, anxiety, and depression, all that stuff manifests you know, dis-ease in the body, right? And so it's like, oh, wow, if you're angry your entire life, you know, they say that um, anger will manifest as cancer in your body, right? So it's like, wow, okay, that's kind of an interesting kind of concept there too, you know, based on what we were saying about, you know, um, the body wanting to preserve itself. And it's like, well, we're kind of not doing that if we're angry and manifesting I think definitely emotions, yeah. uh, like stagnant, pent up emotions that aren't processed and felt that just, you know, get stuck in our bodies, I think most definitely have physical effects on us. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, I'm sure science in some way, shape or form has fucking, I mean, they do prove that like with mental health and depression and things like that, that it, you know, raises your blood pressure and all these kind of different things. And it has physical effects on you, even though it's just simple emotion. And so it makes perfect sense. And I think, like you said, whether it's cancer or some other chronic illness or debilitating disease or something like that, I mean, you see that all the time. It's really, really hard. Like, like I can think about a lot of people that I know that you can see, right? And you can tell it's like, oh, you're experiencing this thing in your life right now. And I'm not just talking about a momentary thing, but like you have this chronic issue that you're dealing with in regards to your physical body, your well-being, your health, and it's directly correlated and tied to all your trauma, all your pain, all your depression, all your sadness, all your anxiety and fear and hate and anger, anger, rage, everything that we'd never want to fucking fully feel and process. Mm -hmm. Like how often do you feel a really shitty feeling and immediately your go-to is like, nope, like I'm going to get out of this. I don't want to feel this anymore. I don't want to feel this anymore. Like mm -hmm. how often do you feel sad? And you tell yourself that we mm -hmm. think it, we verbalize it to people around us. Like, okay, I got to, I got to shake it off, shake it off. I don't want to feel this anymore. We want to stop all of those negative emotions as opposed to just writing them out as opposed, we don't want to stop happy emotions. We don't get feeling happy. We're like, okay, whew, getting a little too excited, a little too happy. <laughs> the day's too beautiful. God, I feel a whole bunch of joy. I better stop this. We don't do that. Right. Right. And I think it's asinine that we let one end of the spectrum flow freely and the other end of the spectrum, we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I only want 3% of what you have. Right. I don't want the full 100% of what you bring. But we cheat ourselves, right? Yeah. Because then we don't feel that end of the spectrum then slowly over time by not fully feeling that end of the negative emotions and all the shit that we have at that end of the spectrum, it starts to suck away at all the joy and the happiness. So then we don't get to feel the full extent of that end of the spectrum as well. Yeah, exactly. It's all about balance, Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right. It's kind of funny because actually I, 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 while you were talking, I something sparked a memory here um, of of when I was going through that anxious period, I remember laying in bed one time and I mean, I was cozy, I was comfy, I was ready to go to sleep. Um, and I started thinking about something. I mean, it was probably, I don't know, college or something like that, some exam or whatever. And so all of a sudden I remember thinking and um, my heart started racing. And then all of a sudden my lungs felt like they were closing up. And then I stopped myself and I was just like, holy shit. I was like, it, I am just laying here and I am causing a physical reaction in my body. And then I was just like, well, if I can create this type of reaction, I can uncreate it too, right? You know what I mean? But it was also, it was just like, okay, let's think about this for a second. And, you know, why why am I freaking having this panic attack or whatever? And it's, you know, of course, fear and of some future event that I was creating in my head, <laughs> you know. Um, 
And so anyways, that was, uh, that was just an example. And that was actually, that was many, many years ago. Um, and you were thinking about a past experience. Is that right? Is that what you said? No, I was, I was You're thinking, just creating shit in your head. Just creating shit in my head. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, for me, that has been like my, um, anxiety is just me creating up scenarios in my head. And then all of a sudden I'm in a panic, but it's like, now I know that I can create a million scenarios in my head and it'll never be that scenario. <laughs> you know? So, or that outcome, you know? So anyways, it almost never is. No, like, no. I mean, even the good things that we want to create exactly. in our heads, right? It almost, I mean, there's always shades of it. You could think of really shitty experiences and get all this anxiety and then the event happens or something takes place and it's like the smallest shade or tone of that. And the same thing happens when we want to manifest and create beautiful things, right? Mm -hmm. We create all this, it's going to be exactly like this. And then the, the thing happens, the experience happens, you have that thing that you're super excited about and it didn't turn out anything like you imagined it would be. Right. And we look at that and be like, okay, that's okay. Like I allow for the fact that, you know, I can't control the universe and make everything turn out exactly the way that I want to. Yeah. But yet we forget about it at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Where... God, it's so funny. We're so fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm tell I well, I just had um, you know, I was just flying over uh the earth here at nighttime and oh my god, it's just like, yeah, looking at all these, you know, all the houses and everything like that, and I'm just like, oh my god, like this is Eight billion people or something like that on this planet. That means there are eight billion different perspectives on every aspect of life. And like every aspect, like I could say the grass is green. Somebody else will be like, no, it's not. It's blue. You know what I mean? It's like there's that much difference. <laughs> I, I caught myself getting really freaking overwhelmed. I was like, oh, my God, it's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, and um, so, yeah, I, it's there's just so much <laughs> perception right in yeah. reality yes. and what really is real yeah you know i think about it all the time when it comes to so i believe in energy that's why it's the energy is love podcast yeah i think energy is the thing that binds everything together not just us as people but us as like the whole entire grand cosmic scheme of fucking everything that ever was ever right. will be in existence is all energy and at the core of it it's love but not in the sense of like love that we think, but it's just so pure and super high vibrate. Anyways, yep. um, but that's my perception of the meaning of life. And it's no different than the perception of God being the meaning of life. Yeah. I just call it something different than what they call it. Or they, I mean, pointing to the people that are walking past it. No, like, you know, people that, it doesn't matter what we label it or what we call it. It's our perception of what, our reality is right now yeah. in this world. And I think that all of those things are right. And I think if you believe in heaven, then when you die, you're going to go to heaven and it'll be what you believe it was or a shade of what you believe it was. Right. And I, you know, I think that's the same thing with everything. Like you're saying, you know, for me, the grass is green as well. <laughs> However, I bet if we like really scientifically broke down the fucking shade and tone and color of green, it would be vastly different between you and I. Right. As a, you know, everybody's going to have a different idea of what that color actually is. Yep. And, um, but I, that's the thing for me. I think what we believe is in fact real. And so people that think like, you know, there's where uh, this is a beautiful park. Um, unfortunately we're stuck in the van cause it's a shitty overcast day, but you know, there's people that would be like, oh, there's fairies here. Okay. I believe that there's fairies here. Yeah. I don't see them. I believe that you probably see them. Um, and I believe that that's real for you and I can accept that and not in the way of like placating and be like, okay, crazy person. Yeah. There's fairies here, but there's people that totally think that there's fairies out in nature. Yeah, and absolutely. Obviously everywhere. Right. Right. And I believe that as well. However, it's, it's not something that I need to hold on to and define my present moment with right where you'll have people and fairies is just an example it's fucking anything right right there's people that choose it's not even just in the realm of spirituality and hippie shit it's like people that get so caught up in this is what they have 
chosen to define their life about. So like people right. that really like fairies, then it's all about fairies. Right. Uh, their spirit guides are fairies. Yeah. They have fairy figurines. <laughs> Uh, when they need to find their keys, they call in their fairies. When yeah. we're <laughs> cleansing our home, we bring in the fairy energy. It's the full moon. I'm going to go dance with the fairies. Like everything for them is fairies. Right. Because that's what they have used to define, you know, their reality and their experience. And that's real. Right. And it's stupid, I think, and silly for us to be like, no, crazy bitch, you're up in the night. Right. I don't see any fucking fairies. Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, Be who's to say? Yeah. Belief is, is, uh is pretty pretty powerful <laughs> yeah it's like the placebo effect too right totally i was listening to this podcast on the way here on the three and a half day drive that i took to come to reno and it was they were talking about you know that placebo effect and how they'll give people that sugar pill but tell them that it's an allergy pill and like 70 percent of the people in the study had increased um not symptoms, but decrease in symptoms from mm -hmm. their allergies. And there was like 30% of people that actually had physiological effects that they could see and tell that their body had actually like was no longer sh showing symptomatic signs of that allergy. Right. Right. And it was straight up just a sugar pill, but that's the power of the energy that our mind creates. It's this massive fucking machine inside of our skull that defines our reality right yeah <laughs> exactly yeah and we only use a little fraction of it <laughs> uh -huh. i think we use more i really do starting to <laughs> no i think we do i think that whole thing of like we only use 10 percent of our brain power yeah. i think is that that's us keeping us small uh, still yeah right i think the fact is that we use 100 percent of our brain power we just don't really believe it yeah and it's not just because we'd like to think well when i start using 20% and then 30% then yeah, I'm going to be able to teleport. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be able to read minds, yeah. right? I'm going to be able to do all these different things and uh, move things. Telekinetic. I'm definitely going to be telekinetic when I reach 40% of my brain power. I think it's all bullshit. Uh, yeah. But I think the fact is our brain is operating at 100% all the time. Uh, yeah. Because why, like, what else is it doing? I <laughs> just. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like ninety percent of our brains just sitting there, sitting there, and it's fluid, just taking a bath all day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> every single part of our body has a purpose and a reason and a yeah. rhyme to it. Yeah. So our brain is just not like sitting there waiting to come online. Right. No, it's fucking moving. Yeah. Like it's constantly doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you. Um, that's the other reason why I like asking this question in the beginning because it typically sparks wonderful conversations. Yeah. Um, but earlier you talked about past lives and I want to get your take on it. It's something that I haven't talked about on the podcast in a really long time. Okay. Cause I typically don't talk about a ton of this stuff anymore. Um, but yeah, tell me what you, what's your take on past lives? Um, you know, I, so I've had some pretty awesome meditations and stuff like that. And I mean, for me, I feel like I have this soul, this higher self, this energy, this whatever that is occupying this body this time. Um, and that I feel like this soul is here, chose this life, chose this, you know, the programs, the limiting beliefs this time to overcome. You know what I mean? And I feel like uh, I feel like it's a hell of a long process for some reason that um, I keep coming back to keep hitting these different layers of these programs and limiting, limiting beliefs to just come fully connect with that higher self and experience it in this realm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes, I do. I do believe in past lives. I mean, future lives, present lives, all, all happening right now, you know. All happening right now, right? Yeah. So, like, that's the thing that I got stuck with when it came to past lives. Because I had a ton of similar experiences through meditation, through healing journeys, through all sorts of different things that yeah. would take place where you would see things. You would catch glimpses. You would have feelings. You would have sensations. Like, I had some very, very powerful stuff that at the time played intr integral. I can never say that word. I need to get a new a new word in the place of that word, but I, you know, played a big role in my life. Yeah. And then I got to the point where I'm like, well, wait a minute, like, 
like my overriding belief is everything is just now. That there isn't a past and there isn't a future and that everything is taking place right now. Right. So then I had to come up with something else because then past lives didn't make sense. Right. Because it was the past. Right. And then it seemed very much like my little tiny brain trying to keep things small so that I could hold on to it, fill it, and make sense of it. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like seeing this ginormous, like the chalkboard is full of mathematical trigonometry, like astrophysicist equations and me being like, uh, we're just going to stick with two plus two yeah. <laughs> uh, equals four because I can't make sense of anything else. Right. And so I think that past life experiences or memories or whatever the fuck we want to call them are just simultaneous experiences of your energy somewhere else uh, right now at right. the same time. Right. Exactly. And I just feel like that the, um, you know, the whole past life term is just, and this whole present moment term <laughs> and everything happening all right now is, I don't want to necessarily say it's new to this, but it's definitely new to me. But it's like when you've actually experienced it, <laughs> you know, then you start to really question like, oh, shit, like, wow, what's really going on here? <laughs> so but yeah um but yeah it's a uh, it's some crazy stuff <laughs> <laughs> what's one that uh like what's one that sticks out to you that's has significance for you um so i was in this meditation and i was really struggling because it's like um just like i know who i really am right i know i am that like um, just that free person, just so free, right? Just in every aspect. Um, and so I was just really, I don't know, just kind of focusing on that. And then all of a sudden I just saw, I saw me as, you know, my higher self right now, which I mean, I'm already connected to her. So it starts to get really confusing. But so anyway, so I saw her and she was just like so gorgeous and just so you could just see the energy off of her was just so amazing. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> and then she like turned and then, you know, it went into like that in infinite, you know, like tunnel mirror thing. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I just started running. And then it was like I was just collecting all these energies. It was so crazy. It was like one of the best experiences I've ever had. You know what I mean? I came out of that and I was just like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, okay, okay. Because it was so like, I mean, I was just there. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was very powerful. Yeah. I think sometimes too, because um, that's the other aspect of it that I think is so many times we want to have a past life experience and then learn from it so that we can grow more, right? That right. we can evolve more so that we have a past life experience so that we have a greater understanding of where we're currently at. And I think that that is um, selfish. And I think that that is foolish because I think that oftentimes the thing that we are seeing or connecting with or feeling from a past life experience in the present moment is really for that past life experience. And they're really getting more and it's the, you know, that connection and that sync that is happening between that energy, your energy and that energy, which is your energy, because we're all the same energy and we're all connected and all this big chaotic ball of whatever that. So, if, so for me personally, like if I had a past life, I had one. I've had multiple ones. <laughs> you sit here and ramble and be like, which one do I want to pull out and talk yeah. about? I had this once where I felt like I was an alien dropped on this bizarre, weird planet. And it was super sad and lonely. And I was like by myself, but I was like, I ended up killing myself jumping off of this cliff. And anyways, um, did I gain something from that? Yeah. Like I think at the time I probably took something away from it. But then I think also that that was probably more applicable to him uh, in connecting with me. 
So I'm seeing that portion of the story being played out or the snapshot of time or space or whatever that's occurring. And at the same time, he's getting some snapshot of me here. And he's like, oh my God, I just had this amazing past life experience of this guy. And he was like doing stuff and he was, you know, whatever the fuck it was that I was doing. He was driving this red machine that (laughs) was going so fast. I don't know. I think he's from the future. Anyways, I think that oftentimes they get just as much from the experience, if not more than we get from the experience, the the mutual aspect of the energy connection that takes place. Like those two balls collide together for a moment and then they bounce off and separate again. But during that collision point, sometimes we take more from it. Sometimes they take more from it. Sometimes it's an equal exchange, but. Wow. I never even thought of that. That is so awesome. I think that's fantastic. It's a cool way to think of it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because honestly, if it's if we are all this energy, then why wouldn't we all be sharing all these different experiences and taking different things from all over the place? So, well, we yeah. see it in like real life and present day. You know, like you'll have encounters with people, and you know, everything that you know, you you'll meet somebody and you'll have a conversation with them, or you'll have dinner or something like that, or something will take place, and and then that's it. Like. You move on with your life. But for them, that was a very profound experience for them where it was like, I met this person and, or even just like simple things like at the grocery store, you say, have a good day, or you really like take the time to connect to the person long enough to just so that they are seen and heard. And now that person is like, oh my God, I was so sad and I was having such a terrible day. And then this person walked in. And really said, you know, like took the time to say hello to me and it changed my whole day. And maybe it changed the whole course of their week mm. or their month, or maybe it saved them from going home and killing themselves. Right. Or maybe it, you know, whatever the case may be. And for you, it was just like, uh, who? I, I don't remember that person. What are you talking about? So we see it in present day where we have these connections with everybody that we encounter. And sometimes they're more profound for us. And sometimes they're more profound for them. And sometimes it's just nothing it's just bumping into each other and the cosmic spin of energy that takes place and the ones that i really like thinking about are all the ones that we don't really get the pieces of (laughs) so like (laughs) last week prior to this week (laughs) prior to this week which was last week (laughs) my week was just total shit yeah it was everything that could go wrong went wrong i was in columbus ohio working and everything just went wrong yeah just continually like absolutely everything, like literally everything that went wrong, went wrong. And it just continued to go wrong. It never went right. Yeah. Right up until the very, very end. And then finally enough things went right that I got to come home. I had to extend my trip longer. I had to be there. It was just terrible. And then even on my way home, nothing went right. My flight got delayed. Everything went chaotic trying to get home. My bag never made it. I had, it was just shit the entire time. And so undoubtedly, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I can sit back and relax and, okay, that's done and over with. But it's like, what the fuck was the reason for that? And they're definitely, I shouldn't say they're definitely, that's the other thing too, is like, I think we always want to make our life seem so important. Maybe there's no fucking reason for it and it's all chaos, but we like, I like to think that there's a reason for it, right? Right. Like everything went to shit because... I avoided an accident or I wasn't in the place that would have caused the accident that would have triggered this and would have killed three people or whatever the case may be. Right. Right. Yeah. Or it could just all be chaos as well. Yeah. Um, I've definitely thought about this, too, because there's been times where it's like I'm on point, you know, it's like I'm exercising and I'm eating good and I'm meditating every day for like two hours and everything's going great. And then. Um, you know, some weird chaos thing will happen and I'm, and then I'll start to question my entire life and my entire belief system. (laughs) It's like, well, if I'm the creator of my reality, how in the fuck did I create this when I've been, you know, doing all these things or whatever? Um, and then, so then I started thinking about it a little bit more and it's just one of those things. I just feel like, I don't want to use the word test, I mean, because I just think that's ridiculous, but I mean, I don't, for lack of a better word, I guess, but it's just one of those things. It's just like, okay, when you're in this chaos, 
you know what I mean? It's like your reaction, um, you know, it's like, okay, let's see who you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like one of those things. It's like I've, which I'm learning is my reaction is just going to be whatever it is. Sometimes I'm going to react better. Sometimes I'm just not, you know what I mean? Or handle things better, you know? And um, for me, yeah, it's just being as best of an observer as possible and being as easy about it as possible. You know what I mean? But then there's other times where it's just like, I'll tell the universe, just I'll sit and I'll, I'm driving in the car. It's always when I'm in the car, you know what I mean? Driving in the car, it's just ease the fuck up universe. Ease the fuck up. Like I'll just start pointing at the sky. <laughs> it's pretty funny but then it's like all of a sudden I'm laughing at myself because you know I'm driving and I'm pointing it you know what I mean and so all of a sudden it's lighter you know so um but yeah I don't think there's any wrong or right but I've definitely thought about that when all of a sudden there's all this chaos and um my ability to freaking just let it roll off you know my back it just yeah it's just hit or miss I feel like <laughs> Yeah, there's times that it's definitely like I handle it like a rock star. And then there's times that I just pile it all on and it smothers me. Mm -hmm. And I sit down underneath the pile of shit that I've allowed to pile up on my back. And I'm just like, well, can't get any worse. Just keep fucking piling it. And it right. does. And then the universe is like, okay, well, you, you wanted some more. So we have some more for you. Right. And that's the other thing too is I don't think the universe really gives a fuck. No, it's... I don't think no. it has the time to sit back and be like, what should we fuck Craig's life up with today? No, it's... Or what should we give him to manifest abundance and make it... <laughs> it doesn't fucking care. No. It's, you know... It's neutral. Yeah. It's just doing what it does. It spins right. energy. Right. Exactly. And it's my responsibility to feed the spin of energy and help the universe spin. Right. Exactly. I... I got really stuck in this spiritual work. I mean, it's so funny, like the stories that we can um, tell ourselves about even spiritual work. It's like, oh, you know, because I perceive myself as a good person, you know, and so I, you know, walk all over the place and I like to go hiking and I'll pick up litter and I'll, you know, I recycle. I mean, of course, I want to do all these things, right? Um, I'll save baby ducks that fell into the damn drain pipe, you know, and it's like, how do you get the damn crate off? Like, oh my God. So, you know, so I was doing all these things and, you know, I've saved hundreds of frogs one time um, and they were just so cute. But anyways, um, but I'm like, you know, and then like something happened. Of course, I don't remember it was because that's how fucking important it was at the time, right? Um, but something happened and I'm just questioning the universe like, well, I'm such a good person. And it's like, no, this isn't a reward system, right? It's like you said, it's an energy <laughs> system. You know what I mean? What have you been contributing? It's like, yeah, maybe you're saving all these animals and everything. But how do you feel on a daily basis? Oh, you're a ho-hummery. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, there you go. Yeah, I think the universe keeps everything in balance just by its nature, right? It's yeah. always in balance. Yeah. And then I think it's our, I think the goal of life to some extent is um, not achieving that level of balance, but recognition of that's the purpose. It's just balance. Yeah. And so, you know, it's never one end of the spectrum or the other. It's just this happy place in the middle. But it's not the ho-hum. It's the embracing the full spectrum of balance between all sides, right? right? We can't ever just stay in happiness and we can't ever just stay in depression. Right. We just get to be in the balanced place of experiencing all of it. Right. And that's exactly what I thought. I was just like, well, if I get there in my spiritual work, then I'll always be happy. And it's like, no, that's that's not how it is for me at all. You I don't know think I mean? that's how it is for anybody. Yeah. I think there's plenty of people that think it's like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That that's their goal, spiritual enlightenment or yeah. really balancing their heart chakra enough that they are always open. And it's like, that's not the purpose. Your yeah. heart chakra should be closed sometimes. Yeah. Because that's balance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I feel like that's exactly what I'm learning now is like, um, I don't need to run from any of these feelings, you know, even the ones that I don't like. You know what I mean? It's like, nope, just feel them and, you know, write it out. 
<laughs> you know, and just not that lingering in there. So, yeah. Well, Lindsay, fuck. That's wonderful. Um, oh, I want to talk to you about the fucking light. Like, that's the whole reason. <laughs> that's why we met. Uh, several, what was it? In August, yeah, Stephanie and I were at the float conference, and yeah. you were there with a bunch of other cool people, and you guys had your fancy lights, yeah. And uh, Stephanie and I sat down in front of them. So, I'm like, I can definitely share my experience. However, explain to people what the hell it is that I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So this is the Lucia Light experience. Um, and what it does is it uses white flashing light to gently encourage the brain to go into that beautiful meditative theta uh, state. Um, and of course, I mean, when we get to that beautiful meditative state, we relax. And when we relax, we open up. When we open up, we feel better. And so there's just this kind of cascading effect that that's happens with the light. Um of course, everybody's experience is different <laughs> um, because everybody's different. Like we were talking about before, there's 8 billion people in the world, 8 billion different perspectives, actually infinite perspectives. But anyway, um, and so <laughs> the experiences have ranged so much and it's just been one of the best things to watch ever. <laughs> I mean, it it is so fantastic to have people come out and it's just like, I mean, the things that I have heard <laughs> are just incredible. When you did know? you first come across it? Um, so I was at a meditation retreat in Mexico um, and we had just gotten out of this really deep med meditation. Um, and I heard this girl behind me like, oh my God, it was like the Lucia light experience. And she was just going on and on about this light. And so I kind of went over and talked to her for a minute um, and I, I was still in such a meditative state that I couldn't really hear what she was saying. I just wanted to go swimming in the ocean. <laughs> so I went and did that. And, uh, and then I found her later when I was kind of more, um, on this plane. And, um, I was like, yeah, so what is that light thing you're talking about? And she's told me a little bit more and I was like, okay, cool. And I just want to stay focused on the meditation retreat and, you know, going deeper and everything. And, um, then when I got home, I looked it up and I was like, wow, holy shit. I was like, this is nuts. You know, um, you know, there's all kinds of research and stuff done on it. And, you know, they have the the brain mapping equipment, the EEG equipment that reads brain waves and everything like that. And I'm certified in that. Um, and so when they were getting all sciencey, I was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. You know, they really were thorough about this. Like this is, you know, something legit, not just a cracker jack prize you know um so then I was like okay cool and then um there was a training that was in Oakland um from the same girl I mean we're friends now because I got her information and stuff at the retreat and so uh, there was a training and I went to Oakland and I was actually going to be in the Bay Area uh that weekend anyways so it was like this total serendipitous thing that happened. And then I had my first session and it was just like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, I mean, it just was such an amazing reflection of, of me, you know? And I mean, it was just amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So, so yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. It's like, it's, it gives you that deep nervous system relaxation as well as it activates and opens up different parts of the brain. So, you know, people are having these wild visual experiences as well. So, and it's very, very unique to each person. <laughs> it definitely, I, I, I would, I would agree. I've, I mean, I've only had the smallest taste of it, the smallest sample of it, but I could see that. I could see how it would be, do you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I think sometimes our experiences mirror each other, right? Everybody's going to have some commonalities and things like that. But um, for you personally, what is it about uh, working with the light, what is it about that experience that you were so drawn to, right? That you wanted to like just have more of it, like to start being what do you like? What do you call yourself? Like a, a practitioner or what, what? What? What is it? Um, a light attendant. A light attendant. Yeah, yeah. Um, it everything about it felt so right. <laughs> you know, it just 
Um, because I mean, I was, so the brain mapping certificate that I got, um, I was so pumped about that because I wanted to be a mobile, you know, brain mapping business and go to health and wellness centers for, you know, sciencey people like me that need proof that this shit's working and all this other stuff. And, um, but that equipment was, I mean, it was getting close to like 70 grand for the equipment. And so I didn't know that, but I, did the hands-on training and everything and then found out at the end and I was devastated. Right. But then fast forward to the light. I mean, it makes sense now that that's why I did that program so that I could understand the light um, and what it's doing and why it works and be able to explain it in a way to folks that, you know, don't know what brain waves are. They're like, yeah, well, you know, I know what sleep is, you know, or something like that. Um, so it's like, having all these pieces start to fit together and then having my own journey in this spiritual work fit with this. I mean, everything was just so right. You so know? explain to us what the hell it is doing to our brain <laughs> and why it uh, not just gives us cool visuals, but activates that parasympathetic nerve system and relaxes our body and does all that. It's just white flashy light. Right. Yeah. Well, because it's at the, the frequency of that theta theta frequency. Um, and then of course it's like, it's the person's ability to let go. Um, but there are certain sessions that, I mean, when we're talking with people, it's like, we're, that's our job as a light attendant. It's like, we really hear what people are saying. Um, and then there's like some sessions that man, just get people to let go and relax. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. It's, do you have people that it doesn't work on? Um, yeah, so there, there has been a handful of people, um, and it's really interesting because it's one of those tools that everybody should try it, but it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I, I find that the people that are like, you know, trying to force their loved ones, like, no, no, oh my God, you have to try this. They're like, yeah, it's a cool light show. You know what I mean? And then I'll just explain to them, it's like, but it's white flashing light and this is you creating all these um, images and this is your connection. And, you know, and it's like, they're like, yeah, cool light show. <laughs> and they get up and walk away. Yeah. So it's kind of like um, the, the people that are drawn to it, those are the folks that have a tendency to just be able to just let go and have these amazing experiences. So, yeah. yeah it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's funny because, uh, like we tried to, de I've tried to describe it to people since, <clears throat> and it's kind of a difficult thing to describe. Uh, I mean, like from the outset, it's easy, right? You sit in this chair, you have some headphones on, you're listening to some cool, relaxing music, whatever it may be. And then this fucking bulb thing sits in front of your face and just flashes shit in your eyes. Right. And then that part's easy enough to explain, even though it seems a little odd. But then to explain what happens during that time period, it's like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah. I mean, and that's definitely um, a challenge that I feel like light attendants, you know, especially when we're going to like new areas um, because and that's why we always offer a free demo um, to some place that we're trying to partner up or collaborate with because. It's seriously one of those things. It's like we could talk about it all day long, but it's like, my God, once you experience it, I mean, it's, I mean, no words, really. It's like, I mean, I, you know, you could sit here and say, oh, my God, yeah, the colors, but no, the colors that you see, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I mean, colors that just don't even have names. So, um, yeah, and it's pretty wild. And, and I've had some folks that have like full on, um, this woman, I was having an amazing experience. She saw herself as like a robot, you know, and she saw her, the like her, she was erasing, like she was all pixelated and she was erasing away. And then it went completely blank. And then she kind of realized it's just, she was like this intuitive knowingness that she was uploading like a new, better program or something like that. I was like, Whoa! <laughs> I was like, that's freaking cool, you know. Um, so yeah, it's uh, this. Like I said, I could tell you story after story, but it's it's so unique to each person. How have you seen people use it in regards to like 
rather than just a one-time experience where they got some really cool fucking visuals and right. it was a neat kind of thing. How do how does somebody use it in regards to like, um, you know, healing or clarity or you know something that they can incorporate into kind of their their life into making their life more balanced? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've had folks have one one hour session and they look at me and they're just like I have never been so clear in my entire life and I never see them again so it's like <laughs> I mean they got it like they got their what they needed you know what I mean um and then I've had other folks that have you know needed to buy um like a three or six session package because we had some some more things to work on and some more layers to kind of dive into. So it's definitely, um, I mean, those are just the things that I offer. It's like one hour, three, three, one hour packages. Um, I offer like half hour tune ups, like, Hey, if you don't want, don't need the full hour and you just want to, you know, a tune up. Um, and so it's pretty much, I just like let folks decide and, and people actually are, way more intuitive than I've given them credit for <laughs> because they'll they'll keep coming back like no I, I think I need another session okay great let's do this you know what I mean so it's it's pretty cool um and also like within the sessions um people are way more intuitive than I than I've given them because they've some people have like um talked about pain like in their shoulder or their hip and they're like and I just sent the light to it and it went away. And I'm just like, <laughs> I've heard that multiple times and it's just like, oh my God, wow, it's so amazing that, you know, um, and then some folks have seen like black blobs or, you know, some weird um, block or obstruction or something like that. And they're just like, and I just sent the light to it and it went away. And it's just like, God, that is so cool, you know? That like when people are in their element, when they're in that deep meditative state, I mean, they're just opened up and they just know what to do. It's so fantastic, you know. Have you ever had, um, have you ever had an experience similar to or as intense just through, not, not, not just through regular meditation because meditation is in and of itself an amazing thing but yeah have you ever had an experience just as powerful without the light yeah definitely um so between the light and the meditation and some other um types of journeys and everything and like the that weed. yeah <laughs> <laughs> other things you know um i've all i've had very similar um experiences but different right because there's there's infinite experiences to have um and so and so that was also one of the factors when I had my first session it was just like oh my god because I've I've seen those patterns I've seen that geometry and everything like that but you know for a blip and then I'm like oh my god what is that you know <laughs> it's like oh my god a wormhole I'm going through no I'm not because I you know scared yeah. I scared it and I scared myself right <laughs> um but yeah, so I've had I've had really similar experiences, but but different for sure without the light. Does everybody think in some way? Shape, well, I mean, you would know, but does do people? Do most people talk about the the shapes and the patterns and kind of that geometry that they see in that space? Yeah, um, definitely, because it's definitely opening up that that part of the brain that is, you know, um, releases that kind of stuff stuff dude. <laughs> yeah i wonder because to open us up to that whole channel you know that was the one thing that i found really profound so i had like the quick little five minute sample taste of it okay and after that it was like uh i want some more yeah and so <laughs> we did like a half hour session stephanie and i each did a half hour session after that but because it, initially it wasn't just the colors I mean, the colors are really beautiful. I mean, I love color, obviously, and I've seen color through meditation and things like that. Yeah. And then I started getting the patterns and I'm like, oh, fuck, I love this stuff. Like I used to get it all the time when I was meditating way more and I was doing a lot more um, kind of that deep meditation, spiritual work. Yeah. And I, I don't do that as often as I used to. And so when I started seeing that stuff, I'm like, oh, and then, and then I forgot how both easy it is and hard it is to let go into it. Yeah. Because I remember 
meditating in the past where I would start to get some of those visuals and be like, oh, this is it. And then I'll go away and be like, okay. You know, and it's that game of trying to let go enough, but yet, but the reality is too, I think you have to hold on to it as well. Yeah. Like you have to be able to hold on to it enough so that it will come through and you'll start to visual, not just visualize it, but so that you will start to see more of it. But I'm, as we're sitting here talking about it and I'm thinking back to my experience with light, it's like where, you know, I think in the realm of spirituality, people like to think, I mean, sacred geometry is not a new thing in the sense of, you know, obviously mathematics and science and all these kind of different things, but we like to put a lot on um, sacred geometry in the way that it has integrated into the universe and the building blocks of this, that, and the other, and the importance of it and everything like that. But um, because I used to think that I was going somewhere and seeing this information that my body or my spirit or my energy was accessing some other realm or some other wavelength. And then I was seeing this information and then it's like, how do I bring this information back and learn from it and better my, you know, and maybe it's not, maybe it's just uh, that part of our brain that we think is turned off and not doing anything, sitting there being lazy by the other 10% busting its ass. Maybe that's that part of our brain. It's like, oh, look, motherfucker, this is what I'm doing while you think I'm not doing anything. I'm doing some fucking heavy trigonometry mathematical shit right. all the time. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. Right. <laughs> it could possibly just be that, that yeah. we relax enough and get into that theta brainwave that we get to access that part of the brain. And then it just opens up and you're like, holy fuck, it's everywhere. Look at this. It's so amazing and beautiful. And look at all the colors. It very well could just be that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think it's all the above because I've talked to people that are just like, um, they've gotten, you know, to whatever level that they're getting to. And I mean, they're seeing it out in this realm with their eyes open. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've had experiences, I mean, and it's just been like, I just don't really understand what that session was about, I, you know? And so it's like, I just asked for clarity and then, I mean, it showed up. It was, there was this one where, um, I, I get all excited when it's my session day, you know, it's like, whoop, all right, here we go. And so I go and I jump under the light and... Um, all of a sudden, like the, the emotion of like fear came up, you know, and I was just like, whoa, this is weird. I haven't felt scared for a really long time. Like this is kind of weird. But then it just felt like this divine love was just absolutely wrapped completely around me. And it was just like, oh my God, it was so beautiful. Right. And then I got out of the session. I was so confused. I was like, I really don't even know what that was about. And so, I was like, okay, just clarity and just kind of like let it go. Well, it was a week later that um, it came to me. It was just like trust, like just trust everything. <laughs> trust yourself. Trust this life. Trust this process. You know what I mean? Trust the universe and all this stuff. And it was just like, whoa, shit, that was cool, you know? So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, the sacred geometry, it's, it's definitely – Definitely a lot of folks see it, um, but I've also had people tell me, like, no, I saw a full-on scene of, like, something in, you know, that term again, past life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we know what we're talking about here, um, you know, but they've, they'll have they have, like, a whole scene of that come up, you know what I mean? And it's just like, wow, okay, it's it's just so crazy where we're all at and where our brains are at and what our brains are going to tell us and or what the brain or what the light's going to bring out of our brain and to tell us yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah it's pretty wonderful yeah yeah what's the uh so like what do you do with the light i know that you you said you just got back from the east coast yeah and so you travel around and we'll do workshops and things like that right yeah absolutely so um there are some folks that have their um stationary places like oakland floats has their has a light um, but then there's a handful of us that are that travel around. Um, and I like that because I like to travel and I love, you know, going to these different places and introducing the light and, you know, this new thing. And it's just like, oh, my God, what is this? And who is this girl <laughs> like with her backpack and her roller thing? And it's just <laughs> like I'm just a very compact business. You know what I mean? So it's just great to 
to rip around like that. And so and you'll yeah. do like like uh, yoga studios. Uh, I know float centers. Yeah. What other kind of places do you typically go to? Um, pretty much like anything, any any <laughs> anywhere somebody wants to like host special Walmart, events. Walmart. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Parking lots. You know. <laughs> But yeah, so pretty much um, any place, health and wellness centers, um, you know, any place that wants to introduce something new to their to their people. So yeah. very very cool. Yeah. What's the best way for people to reach you? Um, CreateCoherence.net is that's your website. Yep, is the best way for sure. That's where I keep my updated events. Um, but I mean, I also do like home. Uh, private events as well. Um, those are usually pretty fun because then, you know, everybody can talk about their experience after and, you know, it's a good, good way to get people together. Everybody seems to be so busy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so really, much. Really this really appreciate awesome. it. Yeah. And, uh, give me it again, creativecoherence.net. Just create coherence. Dot net. Create coherence dot net. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Because we're creating coherence in the brain, right? Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Who knows well, what the, the, the fuck light, it's doing? Yeah, well, the light is helping us create coherence in the brain. It's creating coherence in another realm and putting us into another dimension. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. How about I just feel the feelings, feel whatever I'm feeling... You know what I mean? And just feel it to its core, but then not wallow in it. I don't have to trust every thought that comes into my head. <laughs> it's just being as best of an observer as possible and being as easy about it as possible. I'm driving in the car. It's always when I'm in the car. You know what I mean? Driving in the car is just ease the fuck up, universe. Ease the fuck up. Like I'll just start <laughs> pointing at the sky. <laughs>